Thank you to Brilliant.org for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Black holes are crazy enough on their own, but crash two together and you end up with this roiling blob of inescapable space that vibrates like a beaten drum. And the rich harmonics of those vibrations seen through gravitational waves could hold the secrets to the fabric of space-time itself. Today on Space-Time Journal Club, we'll explore two papers that claim to have detected black hole harmonics. We'll also give you the latest updates on the most recent, and in some cases quite bizarre, LIGO detections. When physicists talk about black holes, they're usually referring to highly theoretical objects, static, unchanging black holes viewed from infinitely far away. This makes everything clean and simple enough to attempt the already notoriously complex calculations of black hole physics. But real black holes are created in the violent deaths of massive stars, and there's nothing clean about that. We now know that black holes also merge, and in the process produce gravitational radiation that we've only just managed to detect with the miraculous work of the LIGO and Virgo gravitational wave observatories. In the instant after its merger, the new joined black hole looks nothing like the idealized theoretical black hole. Imagine it, two event horizons, two roughly spherical black surfaces that are literal boundaries to our universe. They spiral together and touch, instantly becoming a single surface. Technically, in that instant we go from two black holes to one. But in the beginning, this new black hole looks nothing like its progenitors. It's not even close to spherical, it's dumbbell shaped, and then it's an elongated blob, and then it's an oscillating spheroid, like a ball of water wriggling in space. But what exactly is oscillating here? The event horizon seems to define the surface of the black hole, but it's really the fabric of space-time itself that's vibrating. The two in-spiraling black holes make powerful space-time ripples, gravitational waves, which intensify as the black holes approach merger, only becoming observable in the last fraction of a second. And then the merged black hole continues to radiate these space-time ripples as it oscillates. But these quickly die away as the black hole settles into its final static form. This final phase is called the ring down, an expression that comes from the analogy with a bell, when struck, a bell vibrates with many different frequencies, many overlapping harmonics. As those vibrations give up their energy, in this case to sound waves, the vibrations fade and the bell rings down. A struck black hole also vibrates with many different harmonic frequencies. The harmonics of a vibrating sphere, be it a blob of water in zero G or a black hole, are analogous to the harmonics of a vibrating guitar string or piano wire. In the latter cases, we can describe a vibrating string as a series of standing sine waves of different frequencies, all happening at the same time. The lowest frequency the string can support is called the fundamental mode. It's usually the strongest or the loudest and defines the note, middle C, F sharp, whatever, played by that string. Higher frequency modes are called overtones. They provide richness and texture to the sound. The full set of possible frequencies a string can support are called its harmonics. The harmonic oscillations of 2D surfaces like drum skins, bells, or the event horizons of black holes are a good bit more complex than in 1D. In the case of the event horizon or any spherical-ish surface, we break down the oscillations not into sine waves, but into spherical harmonics. These are a set of functions pretty analogous to a 2D sine wave on the surface of a sphere. And each spherical harmonic can represent a single pure oscillation on that spherical surface with a set frequency. A harmonic oscillation that decays over time is called a quasi-normal mode. For a black hole, another way to think about its quasi-normal modes is as a set of gravitational waves trapped in orbit around the black hole they leak away over time, but while present, they warp the shape of the event horizon. Okay, so a black hole can ring like a bell when struck. In that case, a black hole merger must be the biggest hammer strike of all. But what does the ring down of a black hole really look like? Well, we can answer that by asking what harmonics are present in that oscillation, and how quickly do each of those harmonics fade away? 
Many scientists had assumed that in order to see the overtones, you'd need to look at the tail end of the ring down when the black hole was approaching a more spherical shape. They thought that right after the merger, the black hole would be too chaotic. The oscillations would be nonlinear, or in other words, not well represented by adding together a simple set of spherical harmonics. The problem is, at the tail end of the ring down, the LIGO signals are probably too weak to detect the overtones. Matthew Geisler, Max Isi, Mark Scheel, and Saul Tukolsky of Caltech and MIT went against this prior assumption in their recent paper. They looked for overtones in the ring down from right at the point of black hole merger. Now, this wasn't a real black hole merger that they looked at. We'll get back to that shortly. Geisler and team first found the harmonics in a fake black hole merger. Specifically, a simulated merger by the SXS Simulating Extreme Space Times project, basically the result of teaching a supercomputer general relativity and, among other things, telling it to collide thousands of black holes. The advantage of first trying this with a simulation is, one, you don't have to use a signal degraded by a billion years of travel, and two, you know exactly what parameters went into the signal, in particular, black hole mass and spin. So you know if you got the right answer when you try to predict these values. The researchers found a few very surprising things. First, the waveform was nicely simulated by spherical harmonic oscillations right from the point of merger, so it was not the chaotic mess previously assumed. Second, when the ring down begins, some of the overtones are actually stronger than the fundamental mode even though they do tend to die out more quickly. This means that these overtones are potentially detectable in the real merger signals from LIGO and Virgo, and that has some very exciting implications. The rich structure of overtones in a musical instrument can tell you what instrument you're listening to. Similarly, the overtone structure of a black hole ring down can identify the fundamental properties of that black hole, namely its mass and its spin. The researchers found that they could pinpoint the mass and spin of simulated black holes with much greater precision than if they just used the gravitational wave signal from the lead up to the merger. In astronomy, the analysis of different frequencies of light is called spectroscopy. So this sort of frequency analysis of gravitational waves is now being called gravitational wave spectroscopy. Now, for gravitational wave spectroscopy to be actually useful, probably we'd want to look at some real black hole mergers. And yes, the team totally did this and reported the results in a follow-up paper, adding Will Farr to the team for this one. EC et al. looked at the merger and ring down signal from the largest black hole merger we've seen, which in fact was also the first one LIGO reported. GW150914, a pair of black holes each 30 or so times the mass of the Sun spiraling into each other from one and a half billion light years away. The team analyzed the harmonics in the gravitational wave ring down from this event and claim a likely detection of at least one overtone, detected with a confidence of 3.6 sigma. That means it seems very likely that they really did detect the overtone, but to effectively eliminate doubt, we'd want more observations. By analyzing the harmonics, the team calculates the mass of the final black hole as 68.5 solar masses. They also get a spin for the final black hole, a so-called dimensionless spin magnitude of 0.69, where the spin magnitude can vary between zero, not spinning at all, or one, spinning as fast as possible. 0.69 means this is a rapidly rotating black hole, which is unsurprising seeing as it just absorbed the orbital angular momentum of two black holes. Both the mass and the spin derived from the ring down are consistent with the estimate that was previously obtained by analyzing the entire waveform, but ignoring the overtones. This is important because the overtone analysis only looked at the ring down. So this tells us that all of the information on the nature of the final black hole properties is embedded in those final oscillations. And that brings us to the last, perhaps coolest application of this technique, testing Einstein. General relativity predicts that black holes should be completely defined by three properties, their mass, their spin, and their electric charge. 
It doesn't matter what fell in to make the black hole, atoms, photons, dark matter, monkeys, all of that information should be lost, leaving only three properties. And this is the so-called no hair theorem. Black holes have no hair, well, at most three hairs. And the astrophysical black holes are also expected to have no electric charge, so mass and spin should define everything, including the nature of the oscillations during ring down. The researchers test the no hair theorem by checking whether the frequency of oscillations and the time for the decay of those oscillations agrees perfectly with Einstein's predictions. And they do, at least within the uncertainties of the experiment. The oscillations are consistent with a black hole purely defined by its mass and spin. The authors claim this as tentative support for the no hair theorem. It's a long way from a confirmation of the theorem but with the analysis of more black hole mergers, any deviations from the pure general relativity hairless black hole will either become apparent or become less and less likely to exist. But for now, Einstein reigns supreme. And what about all those new mergers? It's been a while since we saw a big press release from LIGO. The last was the incredible binary neutron star merger that was also detected across the electromagnetic spectrum as a giant explosion. Well, rest assured that detections have continued. LIGO and Virgo have been in their third observing run since April 1st, after massive upgrades to sensitivity. And this run will last for one year. The LIGO team typically waits until the run is complete to announce findings because it takes a while to fully confirm each signal. But the team isn't nearly as secretive as they once were. LIGO has a publicly available alert system so that astronomers can follow up gravitational wave detections with other telescopes. LIGO's Gravitational Wave Candidate Event Database reveals many, many candidate detections, many of which will prove to be real. So far, the list of high confidence events includes around 20 new black hole black hole mergers, a few black hole neutron star and neutron star neutron star mergers, the observatories are seeing a new event roughly every five days on average, but sometimes on multiple days in a row. And on August the 28th, two black hole mergers were seen separated by only 20 minutes and potentially in the same part of the sky. This is currently looking like just a coincidence, but if not, it'll be hard to come up with a plausible explanation for why two pairs of binary black holes should merge near each other at the same time. So, long story short, the initial promise of LIGO and the first detection of gravitational waves really seems to be panning out. Gravitational wave astronomy is now really a thing. We're seeing many, many mergers of black holes and neutron stars. We're learning an awful lot about these objects. And with the new subfield of gravitational wave spectroscopy, we can now listen to the harmonics of ringing black holes and through them, better understand the fundamental nature of extreme space-time. Whether you want to know the number of possible multiverses or the likelihood of aliens, to challenge yourself in the advanced levels of science, you're going to need to have a solid understanding of probability. Brilliant.org has a new course on probability fundamentals that includes interactive challenges and problems to solve. Honestly, that's the only way to get math, to do it. You can learn probability basics such as fairness, expected value, and symmetry in their course, Probability Fundamentals. Effective learning is about problem solving. To learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org spacetime.